Yo, what's going on, y'all? This is Trice, and this is another episode of One of One. But this is a new installment that I'm wanting to bring to the channel where I'm going to be bringing in my guy TJ here to break down some of the NBA's top players as well as other basketball content and really get down and dirty with looking at the details of what makes the great players. So TJ, say what's up, introduce yourself, and let the people know who you are. What's up, you guys? I'm TJ DeStefano. I am the, the owner of Advanced Training down here in Bryan College Station, Texas. Uh, I'm blessed enough to have crossed paths with my guy Trice uh, probably like five or six years ago now. And just our love for the game connected us. You know, when you know when somebody's a genuine hoop head, it's easy to connect with them because you can talk about the game at any point, about any any angle, any detail. So, you know, I'm blessed to know you, bro, and I appreciate you bringing me on, and uh, we'll have some fun with these breakdowns. Right, for sure. And, you know, just a little background on both of us. Like, TJ played uh, Division One ball for a little bit at uh, Texas A&M, and he went D3, played for a little bit. I played four years. NCA ball myself at a D3 school up in Pennsylvania. So we got a lot of basketball knowledge, a couple of college players here. Since then, still hoop all the time, still break down the game. I'm TJ's in the gym every day. I'm in the gym. So, you know, we got a couple of guys here who love the game, and we're going to bring you the uh, the top details that we can as far as what the game is and the knowledge that we have of it. So today, I'm really excited about this one. I've been up in Canada for the last few months. I've been up and around Toronto, and the buzz on this man Fred Van Vliet is crazy up here. Everybody's talking about him. Everybody's talking about um, this all-star season he's been having. So I wanted to run off a few stats because whenever I first got hit with the numbers that he's putting up this year, it really surprised me because like when I think Fred Van Fleet, I really think of like a role player, someone who, you know, was a, a key part to that 2019 championship run the Raps had, but not like a like superstar player, but that's not the case anymore. Um, he's currently playing 38.6 minutes per game, which is the most in the NBA. He's on the floor more than anybody else. He's averaging a career high in points per game with 21.7 and a career high in assists with seven. And the number one thing that stood out to me is he's actually leading the NBA in three point percentage with at least 10 per game at 39%. So this man is really on another level right now. Um, a few years ago, I remember when he signed that big contract, the whole like bet on yourself thing came out where he had kind of turned something down and balled out and got more money. Um, this dude's a real hoop or a real underdog. And I was really curious, what about his game stands out to you when you watch him? Well, I mean, you just said part of it right there. One of the main things that I see every time I watch him play is just his confidence and his self-belief, right? He's six foot or he's enlisted at six foot, so you don't know if that's even true, right? No. So if you're a small guard, you gotta you gotta have that toughness. You gotta have uh, just the mental and the physical grit to say, like, I don't care who's in front of me, I don't care if it's six five, six eight, six ten, I'm gonna bully you and I'm gonna make my presence felt regardless of you know who I matched up against. So I think that's you know key number one is that dude thinks he's the best player on the floor no matter who's with him. And you can see it this year. That's he got funny. you know he got blessed because Kyle Lowry ended up in Miami and it opened up that gate for him to just kind of step into that starter role, step into you know you said leading the league in minutes and he's he's running with it. He's not right. he's not taking he didn't take a step back. He just kept on moving. But you know the actual basketball side of things he checks every box that you need for a guard. He can shoot it, he can pass it, he defends, he has handles, you know. So there's nothing that he doesn't do that you're looking for from a lead guard. But he also doesn't do too much. He's not one of the guys who you see him making six, seven dribble moves, dribbles for 15, 16 seconds. He plays out of lifts a lot. Um, lifts are just, you know, where both feet come off the ground so you can hezzy and kind of see the defense. He plays out of lifts a lot. And he's very simple. He'll make one, two moves, and then he'll use his body, create contact, and get to his spots, and either create for himself or others. So, you know, this year he's just really shown his knowledge of the game is just crazy. He's he's making the right reads consistently. You said right. he's got seven assists. I got right here. He's seven to 2.6 TOs. Yeah. So he's got a little bit over a two to one, you know, assist to turnover ratio. Right. He's, he's taking care of it. And that's playing the most minutes in the league. I agree, man. Like, that's, it's crazy you said that. That's the first thing that stands out to me about Van Fleet is just, like, he's a dog. Like, he's a dog from the very... Like, I remember the very first time I got introduced to him was when he was running the final four runs with Wichita State. And I remember seeing the press runs on, like, the workouts his dad used to put him through at, like, 4 a.m. Like, he's had it instilled from him from the beginning that he was going to have to go out and take everything he got. 
the fact that at his size, you don't see a lot of guards in the NBA who are his size, who are not just like super freak athletes. Like he's not the fastest dude on the court. He's not jumping. He's not jumping the eyes. He's not playing above the rim. The dude is just like so solid at everything. The fact like he doesn't waste any movements on the court. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna take a look at uh, Van Fleet's 37 point triple double he had against the Utah Jazz earlier in the season. We're just gonna break down a few of the plays um, that he had in that game and look at what exactly set that apart. So this first play here I wanted to look at in the second quarter of this triple double against Utah is so Van Fleet's coming off this screen here. I think that's Scotty Barnes setting it. And as he's coming off, he's got he's got the defender going downhill. So he's attacking downhill. He's got the defender backpedaling. I really like how he hits him with that little he hits him with a little cross jab and gets in the middle. And then I just like for some reason I love how he read this play. Like he sees 24 stop in the paint, plants his feet, has 20 jumping up in the air at him, and then somehow turns all the way around and sees the man in the corner for like the skip read like I just love how he was able to drive right at that guy be able to tell the 24 like 24 is just standing there flat footed like he's not he's really not doing anything he's not helping on the drive he's not helping on his man like I don't really know he just got lost I guess but Van Fleet does a great job of finding the shooter on the other side and obviously dude knocks it down but like I love how even though Van Fleet is playing so well scoring the ball, he's still being really efficient. Like I said, he's got a career high in assists this year. He's being extremely efficient in like finding his dues. For sure. You see, if you run it back to the beginning, so what they teach, I remember I watched a video, I think it was Chris Paul that said it, breaking down pick and rolls. But when you come off of this and you got that guy in the corner, you're not really looking for uh, the man in front of you, like I'm pretty sure Fred Van Vliet knows he can beat number 20 to the rim. He's got a full head of steam. He sees the space and he attacks it. Like he gets to the spot that's open, but he's looking at 24. Like that's who his read is because like you said, he's two feet in the paint and he's not even really engaged. You said it. He's kind of standing flat footed, standing straight up. So he knows that's the best option. He's got a thing that might be Ananobi that shoots. Yeah, it looks like it. Just filling up to that wing. And all he does is once he sees 24 in there, he knows it's dead because that's a long closeout. Now. Right. You got to close out from the block to the wing, easy bucket. Yeah. So that's, I mean, that's exactly what you teach as a lead guard. He gets that head of steam downhill, he draws that big man, and then the help side is right. too deep, so he throws it out. Right, yeah, that was a solid play. Second play I got here is in the third quarter now. Uh, it's a close game. It's only a one-point one point game. Utah's got a one-point lead here. And uh, the Raptors actually ended up winning this game by like 14. So this is about the time they started putting together a run. The so Van Fleet's got it in transition. He's bringing it down, full head of steam. I really like how he stops with the ball, kind of hangs, sets it up. Uh, I don't know, who, I can't see who the big is there, but he kind of sets, he looks like he's gonna set a screen going to the right, but then switches. And Van Fleet just attacks the defender. And I love how he snatches here. And the, my favorite part of this move is he snatches back. I'm trying to rewind it. He snatches back and hits him with like the most subtle little in and out hezzy. Like he's gonna snatch back and go back to his right. Hits it with like the smoothest little head fake and then takes his defender straight into the screen. Immediately coming off that screen tight, goes right downhill and just stops on a dime in front of 24, hits the little mid range jumper. I just love the way he plays with like, like you mentioned earlier, he plays with such like a pace to his game where it's like I'm gonna get to my spots I'm gonna use the little head fakes and the little moves to kind of throw you off and I'm just gonna get to where I need to get to he's not dancing around trying to make all these moves because he knows like at his athletic ability like at his level he's got to just make one or two moves and just go so it was really cool how he just, yep. he stringed like two moves together there hit him with a subtle head fake and got to his spot knocked it down like that's what separates like other players of his athletic ability and then puts him up here is just like that next level of reading the game, reading the defender and knowing how to get to your spots. Yup, yeah, and you you talked about it earlier, but his physicality, like he's, gri he's driving on actually one of my former teammates, Daniel House mm -hmm. at this play. And Daniel House is a right. big dude. He's about 6'6", 200 something, he's solid. He goes into him and Daniel House plays great defense and he puts that shoulder to him on the snatch. Right. So that instantly creates separation. He doesn't extend and get the offensive foul, but he gets a few feet or like a few inches of space, which is all he needs. 
because he knows that rescreen's right. coming. And then, like you said, that subtle in and out kind mm -hmm. of frees him. And then probably shoulder probably. to hip on the screen. That's one thing. That's one thing that especially young guards need to get better at is shoulder to hip on screen. He leaves zero space for House to get right. through. And so seeing that, all he's going into is okay. I got that elbow jumper. I got the space for it. Gobert still way too. Or not Gobert. Uh, Whiteside still way right. too deep into the paint. I'm just gonna shoot right. over the top, and it's just casual. Not even. He touches no, no rim. You probably worked that shot. Probably worked that shot thousands no, yeah, of times. No doubt. Had all the time in the world. Like, his defender hit that. Like you said, House hit that screen. And he was done. He's out the play. And it's like, there's no one. He had all day to shoot the ball. All right. So, now we're looking at him here in this third quarter of the game against Indiana. We talked about him playing out of lifts, which is a super simple but super effective move just for the for the fact that it makes the defense stop for a second. You make them read you once you take both those feet in the air because you can drop and go, you can drop and counter, you can hezzy again out of it. There's just unlimited options to what you can do. And here he just keeps it super simple. So he's bringing the ball up the floor, Duarte's guarding him. He gets that little fake ghost screen, guy slides out, all he does is takes one dribble back, uh, one dribble downhill and he punches mm. it back. So he knows, he knows I've got the space now that this guy's cleared out on this left wing. He's rolling to the basket. I've got this whole left right. side to work with. So Duarte's already thinking, right? Like I need to stop the drive. I need to make sure he doesn't get to the rim and create for his teammates, he had, you know, draw help. So he sees that one hard dribble downhill, he turns his mm -hmm. hips and runs. Once you turn your hips and run, yep. you're dead. So he he recognizes that, Van Vliet does. And another thing about players at this level, I don't know if he pre-planned this, but I'm gonna go ahead and assume that he did. What I assume is that he was gonna drive baseline. But when he saw Duarte turn his hips and run, get into that sprint stance, he said, all right, I right. got him. So he hit that step back and it was right. just too late. But like I said, playing out of that lift, he had the explosive movement he needed to right. sell that drive, and then he's got the deceleration mm -hmm. ability, which is something that I didn't know you needed to train as a basketball player coming up. Shout out to PJF for putting me on, you know, right. knowledge. But he's got great deceleration ability, so he, he's going a hundred, a uh, hundred miles an hour on that one dribble right. to zero, and then he redirects that force, sets his feet on balance, catches out. All right, so now the second clip, we're looking at Phoenix and Toronto. This was in the fourth quarter. 40 seconds left. Toronto's down four, so you know he's coming aggressive because they right. got to get a quick bucket. But here's the deal. Jay Crowder is not a small human being. I don't know Jay Crowder's actual height and weight uh, numbers, but you watch him play, he's a solid physical dude. Fred Van Vliet goes right into him, doesn't even shy mm -hmm. away for a second. Doesn't extend the doesn't extend the arm again. So he's not he's not giving any offensive fouls because he's not extending. He's just using his frame. He gets that shoulder right into him, sends him flying. <laughs> Easy layup. That's what we talk about. You're under six foot. Your right. physicality has to be on a, on a different, different level. level. A absolutely different level. And he shows right here. I'm not shying away from anybody. Not I don't care who you are. He bumps him, and Jay Crowder's under the under rim. the rim. I mean, he's literally sitting sitting on the baseline where the goal meets the floor and it's just you look at that type of stuff and you're like okay now i see not the whole reason why he's successful at this level but exactly. one of the main parts he's fearless for one he's tough for two and he just goes man i mean those are a few great plays though that just go to show like exactly what fred van fleet's doing this season that's really separating him apart obviously this video is uh being recorded before they announce or before they do the rest of the all-star draft so we don't know as of now if van fleet's gonna be um an all-star but i think all signs are pointing to hit someone picking him up he's having such a great year um in on a team that a lot of people thought weren't gonna do that great he's he's got them kind of in like that lower seed fight for the for the east i mean he's playing with a lot of young guys and he's, he's doing his thing so shout out to Fred Van Fleet but that's all we have for y'all today I'm curious though comment down below what is your favorite part of Fred Van Fleet's game and what do you think is his ceiling as a player do you think that he can not only be at that all-star level but do you think he can be a franchise player in the NBA I think based on the things we've seen as far as the way he approaches the game his mentality the work he puts in the things he does on the floor he's more than proven that even if he can't be like or shouldn't be the franchise a guy that a franchise is built around 
he dang sure can be a number two option on a great team and be one of the top scorers, one of the heart and soul of a franchise. He's already got a ring to prove it. But uh, like I said, not going to take any more time today. I appreciate everybody tuning in. Thank you for watching this video. Be on the lookout for more coming soon, and we'll catch y'all next time. If you enjoyed this content, be sure to drop a like, leave feedback in the comment section below, and subscribe for more. We got some exciting things coming up soon, and you don't want to miss out. So be sure to ring that notifications bell, and be on the lookout for full episodes of 101 on Spotify and Apple Podcasts as soon as they come available.